Come on in. Hey, Mama Betty, how are you? Good to see you. You guys come on in. We got a great show today. We got a great show. Little Mo. Hey, Little Mo. <laughs> we got a great show today. Everyone know I'm so excited. And if you're a parent, you know how it is when you have your babies. I know who they are to you all, but they are babies. That's going to be a part of the show. Hey, Paskey, come on in. Come on in. Listen, we're going to be having some, uh, also opening for questions. You might want to ask him. And I'm going to try to get to as many questions as I can because he is uh, he's just awesome. He's just awesome. And I want to talk about his empowering role. But let's get everything out of the way. Uh, this is Check In with Mama Wade. And as you can see, I am Mama Wade. And if you want to be able to communicate with me in any way to be a part of the show, you feel like you have something that you are able to give, you go to my website, www.jolindaway.com. I will have it posted later so you can see it. Also, if you want to watch this broadcast over again or and watch the previous ones, then you go to my YouTube channel, which is Check In with Mama Wade. The letter N, not I N, the letter N, which I would post up later as well. Well, because today is one of them days, um, we know July, July have been about the month of empowerment. And um, it really was a blessing for me to be able to get my guest that's getting ready to come on today, which is my very own son, uh, who has a very busy life. You guys have met his chef. You guys have met his masseuse, so you guys know that he's definitely on the road of better health, better me. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to get ready to bring him on in so that, uh, let me get this up, so that we can go ahead and we can go, uh, get started. Are you all ready? Here goes my baby, Dwayne Wade. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hey, son. Welcome. Welcome to Mommy's Show. Um, I'm so glad that you took time and decided that, you know, give me a little time because I know your schedule have uh, gotten very busy. But I didn't ask you to be on because you was my son. I asked you to be on <laughs> because of the empowering life that I have watched you live. You are amazing to me. Um, uh, our audience, I like for you all to know that he's also the person that keeps inspiring me. He keeps me going. He gives me information and gives me techniques to help me to be my better health, better me self. Actually, also in the dietary um, space that um, I'm in right now, he was one that also, um, you know, was one to speak into my life about because he loved he loved us. And it's about, okay, you know, sometimes Ma, you got to change. He won't tell me to change, but he'll tell me the changes that he's doing. He's real cool and smooth that I do it. And, uh, you know, but I, I'm a listener. You know, I'm a listener, you know, and I watch, you know, you can listen to what person people say, but when you see them and you see the results of it, then you'd be like, wow, this really works. So, Dwayne, I know that they did tune in to hear me do all the babbling because, you know, I can go. If uh, next push come to serve. So welcome to the show once again. And how I want us to open up. I want you to open up and just say something to the people. Well, first of all, Mother, um, thank you for asking me to be on the show today. Um, I've like I remember like Chef getting ready to be on the show. I remember my dad getting ready to be on the show. I was actually in Scotland with him when you hit him like, yo, I need you on the show. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I talked to Giovanni before she went on the show and just everybody's excitement about getting the opportunity to come on and talk to you, uh, to share words of life, to talk about the better health, the, the better mental, the better me. Um, and everyone's just excited around it because, you know, we all would love to share our experiences. And so to everybody out there, you know, following mom, you know, you're getting a chance to hear people that's experiencing things in life that are going in rooms that maybe one day you want to go in or, or, in, um, or, or some rooms you will never go in. 
and they are sharing their experiences with you. And that is powerful. That is knowledge. And so soak it all up. Continue to take these this, these experiences and these this information that everybody that come on here and give you guys some word of life um, is not trying to tell you how to live your life. It's just trying to tell you what they've seen and what they've experienced. And so, Mom, you're doing a great job. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Such wisdom. Oh, my God. Someone came on. Melanie said, oh, my God. Hi, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Melanie. How are you doing? Yes, is, yes. Is this, it Melanie? I don't, what's up, Melanie? Melo D. Oh, Melo D. What's up, Melo yeah. D? D-Y? <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, listen, let's, matter of fact, let's do what we do. We, we're, my son and myself are very good at uh, bouncing off of each other. And as you've seen, I had his dad on, and we were pretty good at bouncing off each other as well, uh, and a few other people. Um, and so I want to, I want to go in that direction us just bouncing off each other because we're here to bring empowerment. Uh, as our friend author said, we can not empower people, but we can bring empower, empowering information to people and they have to empower themselves. And I love that. So let's talk about then um, the dream. I know, I know people see you now in the status that you're in and I think it's very important that we let them know how you got to this place. I mean, <laughs> was it really that easy? Can you just get there? What what do they have to put in? Remember this better help, better me, guys. So follow this advice because it, it relieves. It, it, just tell us, how did you get to this place? I mean, that that would be an hour answer. I know. Our hour answer won't even be enough to to cover that. You know, what I would say is, trying to accomplish something that is just visual, right? Like you, you see it on TV or you think it in your mind or someone tells a story, you read it in a book or newspaper, whatever your, whatever your thing is, and you visualize it. And now you have to set a plan to accomplish that, okay? And so I visualized by seeing the Chicago Bulls, by seeing Michael Jordan, by, by getting taken to the courts when I was young, sitting at Washington Park, mama saying, go get you a game. My dad, my dad being my trainer, my dad being my coach. Like I visualized my whole life of, okay, I want to become this basketball player, right? I want, at nine years old, I knew what I wanted to do um, in my life, right? I've said that many times, but how do I get there? Mm. So I said like, that's the, like, that's the hardest thing is what's that, what's the first step? And so I think a lot of us, we have dreams, we have thoughts, we have visions. And that first step is so hard that we can't follow through with it. It's, it's, it's a million steps to get there, but that first mm. step to actually know what it takes to start is the hardest step to take. And so for me, what I always been able to do throughout my life is listen. And so I just sat back and I listened to everybody who felt that they can help me get, take this first step to get there. And then mm -hmm. I found the ones that my gut trusted and said, this is the person that you, you know what I mean? Like it's a gut thing. And I've I followed the Jack Fitzgeralds of the world. I followed the Dwayne Wade seniors of the world. I followed the Tom Creams of the world and so many people to help me get to that dream because I didn't have the full plan. I just had the vision, but I had to have people along the way to help me get this plan. And so how to, how I got there was never quitting, never getting, mm. but I didn't get there by never saying I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit plenty of times. I wanted to give up plenty of times. I didn't think I was the one in a million. I didn't, you know what I mean? Like you question yourself, you doubt yourself. And I think a lot of young, young people, they will see someone like me today and, and you will see all the, the, the things that I've been able to, that I have and I've been able to have because of my hard work. And you would think it was easy for me to get here. You know, and I tell my son all the time, I said, I know what it feels like to be 19 and 20 and sitting in this chair and not knowing what's next. Mm. I know what it feels like to be scared about, you know, trying to go out there and and make something happen and go out there and find your way. I know how scary that is. But at the end of the day, you're not going to find it if you don't get up and take that step. And you Amen. have to figure out how to take that first step to go do it. Hey, man, I love that. I love that. Um, what was interesting with, uh, and I found out later myself, um, what was interesting with, um, with your role uh, okay. What was interesting with your role in your life was this article that had appeared in uh, your high school paper. 
Mm -hmm. And in that paper, you said you actually called out what you were going to be doing. I believe you might have been 16 or 17 or whatever, but you called it out. You said, I'm going to the NBA. Uh, you said you were going to be in the Hall of Fame. You said, I mean, you met, you called these things out at that age. And to see that happen, it was amazing to me. I said, I mean, I saw after the fact. And I, was like, I was in a wild place as your mom. I was in a wild place. I mean, I said, he did it. He made it. And what the advice that I give all of the young children that's in my life, my grandkids is down here, anybody that will listen, I tell them these words that I never forget you said. Work hard now, play later. I never forget them words. And so I tell them to the children, especially my baba, because they have these dreams and visions. I say, yeah, well, you know, your uncle said, you know, you got to work hard now and play later. Because a lot of us play and then we work, you know, we, we, we switch around. We want to work close to the end. Because I know in my life, I played hard and now, you know, I'm working later, you know. But let's, let's be the God that the plan that he had for, uh, for your life, for my life, for your dad's life, and to bring us all together and give us a child such as yourself, who at nine years old was, vision, was a visionary, you know, at nine years old. Okay, all right. So you mentioned uh, Zaire. I have a lot of parents on here. I have a lot of people that are, um, you know, have these dreams for their children. You know how we are as parents. You know, your father, he was, I always tell people that he was your first, your first coach. And he was in it. He was in it with you. He took you places and did things with you. And then God picked it up and took you to the next, next level and the next level. Okay, let's talk about Zaire Wade. My God, I'm, I mean, I mean, I love all my grannies. I love them all. But to see this young man in the place that he is in right now, what can you tell the young, the young guys and girls that's on here today about because a lot of people feel like, oh, he 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 got it made anyway. His daddy name is Dwayne Wade. Oh, he got everything easy anyway. Let's talk a little bit about that child that people think, because they thought you came from a silver spoon until they got to know your mom and daddy, and they found, oh no, he came from the ruddest part. Let's talk about that. What, 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 how were you able to keep him leveled while you were rising? How was you able to keep him level so that he wouldn't rise and get the big head and think that, you know, it's all, oh, that's my dad, that's Dwayne, it's this and that. Let's talk about the, the desire way that is now where he's at today. Well, first of all, this is a perfect leeway into this chain that I'm wearing right here. So I'm sure a couple of people just checking like that. That's that's blingage. Well, my son, my son got me this for Father's Day. And oh. He has one as well, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but it has our last name on it, and at the bottom, it's a, this is DNA. And so I love the colors on the back. I don't know if you guys can see the pink and the blue. And so I, actually, I feel like he like. They to me as a dad, like I was, I, I, I got a little like emotional. I'm like, like, am I a part of the crew? <laughs> am I a part of the DNA crew? Uh, so shout out to Z Wade, man. You know, mom, I, I, I tell, like, I talk to Zaire often. I think, um, I'm probably his top five people of who he talks to the most, right? And you know, I tell him all the time, I tell all my kids all the time, listen, I have no idea what it's like to be you. I have no idea what it's like to be Zaire Wade. And most and most people out here do not, neither. You know what I mean? Like this is this kid has been on this journey uh with me for 20 years. I've been a known person for 20 years. And so he's been right next to me for 20 years and he's had the same dream that I've had, right? His dream is what he's seen. He's seen his dad play basketball. And he's wanted to play this game of basketball his whole life, since I can remember. And to me, that was never the most, uh, I never focused on that with him, right? Like I, I would do things with him, but what I always focus on is the person. I understand that you, at some point in life, you're going to chase dreams. And some of them may be your dream and some of them may be someone else's dream because we don't really, we can't, when we're at a certain age, sometimes we cannot, we don't know who dream we chasing. We don't know if it's somebody, somebody that's older than us dream, father's dream or our mom's dream. We don't know. 
But at some point, you're going to be chasing a dream. And I will do everything I can to help you understand what it's like to chase a dream because I've done it. But my focus with Zaire has always been on the person. It's always been what my father has always tried to do with myself and my stepbrothers and was always trying to make us better than him, right? That was all my dad always said. I want to I want to make sure that you're better than me. And so I took that same thing. If I took anything from my dad and I was like, you know what? I need Zaire to be better, a better man than me, a better human than me, a better. And so I've always focused on the personal side of Zaire and him understanding life and him understanding people and him understanding like business and him. On, so I love at 20 years old, my son perspective. My son wakes up every day to chase a dream. He wakes up every day and work hard at his dream. He work as hard as he know how to work harder. My my route and my journey was different because I worked as hard as I could because I, I had, my stomach was rumbling. I, 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 my mom and my dad was in a different situation. All of it was different. I worked as hard as I, I knew because I wanted to get out. Zaire is trying to chase his dream. He's trying to shut the naysayers up, right? So he wakes up every day to chase a dream. But what I watch, mom, is I watch a young man who moves through this world better than most 30, 40 year old men who has an understanding of people, who has an understanding of business that you cannot teach at this age. Is, is it in them now or, or it's going to be a long journey? And he just have, you know, so, so much uniqueness about him that makes him Zaire Wade. And I cannot wait for him to continue to get older so he can jump more into the uniqueness of Zaire Wade and get out of the shadows of trying to be like Dwayne Wade. Because who he is, mom, and who he's gonna be, oh, I'm, I'm, one of the, I'm one of the most proudest fathers in the world. Cause I know if something happened to me, I know that my, you know, my young king, he got it. Like he got this and he understands how to move and maneuver. So we going through the journey right now. He's 20, he's nervous every day he wake up because he don't know if his dream will come true. But what he don't understand is he's working towards something that's greater and bigger than a dream. And so I cannot wait to see, you know, what happens for him as he follow his dream and as he continues to become, you know, the person that he's going to become. And I love that in you. And I can't say as a father uh, and you are a father of, let me see, you and Deanna are my major stockholders. So you are a father, <laughs> <laughs> you're a father of uh, Zaire, Zaya, um, Zavi, and we have our very own Kavi and you have, um, uh, adopted son, which is your nephew, and you got Davion. And one thing I can't say that I noticed about you as you were uh, playing your sport, you was off into your sport to make life better for your family, how you had got people around them uh, that was able to keep your family going strong, was able to uh, speaking to these young men lives as they was growing up. And then, you know, they're going to get to the point where they smelling themselves. And, oh, don't think big way. D uh, Dwayne didn't go through the same thing you all go through in their little teenage years. Cause they're telling you, the little boys are smelling themselves, but I still watched how you uh, instilled in them work discipline. You know, you still was able to be a part of their lives um, whenever you got, the chance to you take them off and and go somewhere and spend time with them you know and you'll talk to them and and i remember one conversation you had with davion and zaire and you tell them, i'm not gonna talk to you like you know kid i'm gonna talk to you like you grown men and you you laid it out there on the line and so a lot of times when they're young you know the kids feel like we don't know anything but one thing i heard when you were speaking is that zaire have the ability to listen He's a listener. So he listened and then he watches his surroundings. You would think he's one of them kids that talk and stuff all the time. Zaire is a kid that will sit back and yeah. he look and he listen, yeah. you know, and he, he don't mind asking questions. He's still, all of them really, da, da, I know Da is finding his way, you know, on his road. He see his dream and, um, and you teach them about A, B, and C, you know, okay, if A don't work, um, what do you have, you know, on your next? What do you, what do you see? Don't just get stuck right there. Cause so supposing that one don't work. And then you will feel like, you know, I'm, I, I'm not successful. It'll, it'll make you depressed. You'll go into a place of depression. But if you got your, if you got another B say, okay, A didn't work. I'm going on road B and keep on 
going to get on here today with you. I had a plan. I had a plan. My A plan was was to 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 walk downstairs and put this phone on this nice little stand that we have, and and it wasn't here. And then I found it in, in the second room I thought it was going to be in, in the third, fourth, fifth room. So I had to come up with a plan B on the fly because I was like, yo, I got 945. So I had 15 minutes. And also, in the midst of that, my wife said, hey, can you take these four boxes upstairs? Can you put them in the car? I'm like, you know what I mean? And, and in the midst of it, I'm still thinking of my plan B. And I'm thinking of, like, if this doesn't work, you know what I mean? Do I need to get some boxes? Do I need to get some books? Do I need, like, I'm trying to, and that's just for us to sit down and have this conversation. And so if I'm thinking of that for that, you know, in my life, what, what I have to think of, I have to think of all the plans. And so you said one thing, mom, that, um, actually coach Fitz, um, um, coach Fizdale, sorry, not coach Fitz. I got Fizz and Fitz and all that coach, yeah. Fizz, you know, uh, who's like, he's one of my top five people. Mom. He's one of my, when I have decisions or I have, um, or I need information, I go to certain people. Um, David Fisdale is in my top five of those people. I have to sit down with him and talk to him before I make certain decisions. He's just so knowledgeable. Anyway, he told me my greatest strength as someone who coached me. He said, my greatest strength is the ability to be able to take information and immediately apply it. So that means that if you show me a move on Thursday at practice, by Friday in the game, I'm doing it. Mm. And at it because I know how to take information and apply it. Well, Zaire is the same as me. He knows how to get information, receive information, listen to it, and then apply it, right, in certain areas. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying every area in life, but I'm talking about the, the ones, the, the areas that we're in and, and is our strengths. I can apply it. And so we talk about Zaire listening. He's a great listener, but he, he also applies things, even if he don't want to hear the information that's being received to him. He takes it, he sits on it, he muddles in it, and then he applies it in his own way. And so what I've always tried to do is not get in the way of the natural instincts of who my kids are. It's just like a, an athlete, a basketball player. My coach, my college coach took me off of guarding the, the, the best player on the other team for the entire game because he wanted me to play off the ball. So my natural instincts to be a shot blocker, to be a guy who can get steals and you know, and play free safety can show more. Mm -hmm. And I became a better player. And so I decided to not, you know, make everything so structured with my kids. And I started to sit back and let some of their natural instincts take over. And then I can mold and, and teach from there. You feel me? And so yeah. I got to do that a lot with, with Davion, with Zaire, um, as the older two. And now Zaire is reaching that level now where she's 15 and I'm doing the same thing with her. And so I don't get in a way um, I feel that sometimes maybe my voice can be louder. Maybe sometimes my voice can be less. So it's this, it's this battle as a parent of how much do I jump in and say, and how much do I allow them to, to be natural and to have instincts of the people that they're going to become. Yeah. So the fight that I've fought, fought through with my kids is my sister said this the other day, Trigil. She says some kids are products of their environment. And it's nothing you can do. It's, it doesn't matter what environment you put them in. They're just products of their, their first environment. And some people and some kids, they it's DNA, it's genetics. And so as, as I, I don't want to take too much credit for all the things with Zaire and my kids because my DNA and my genetics also is a big part of that, right? Like Zaire is a humble kid, right? Zaire is like me. He has a sweet soul. Whether we do bad things or we're going to do bad things, whatever, we have sweet souls. And so you got to know who your kids are. You got to know who your DNA and your genetics are as well to see what they can become and how much you can push them as well. So it's a, to me, mom, it's more than just, hey, these are my rules, follow them. You know, it's a holistic approach to parenting for me in the ways that I can, because I can't always, with all my kids, I can't parent them all the same way because the setup is different. And so I do, I try to go in it this way. I, I love that, um, not parenting uh, all of them the same way. And I know a lot of us do as parents make that mistake and we try to um, parent our kids. Uh, I know when I was coming up, mama's thing, well, mama parent only way she knew how to parent. And yes, all of us the same way. She didn't see that, you know, I was a little special, a little different from them or this one was that way or that one was more up there. She didn't 
recognize that uh, she's the introvert. No, that's the extrovert. No, that was there. So mama didn't see the natural uh, instincts of us. And she was a hardworking woman. So she didn't really have time to sit at home and sit back and just watch us to see our natural instincts come out. And I think that's good. Uh, definitely got to bring up our baby Kavi. Uh, everybody knows she was born on my birthday, right? That was my birthday present. Plus, um, D, a birthday present to D Wade to have his um, his only daughter born on his mama's B day, and what I love about it my only you, daughter born for everybody out there. I have two daughters that, but my only daughter that was born. Yeah. Um, right, I, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, just, I just out of just the only daughter born for everybody out there. November um, seven, but we do born, have two daughters. Point of you know how when she when she was brought into this world, now Zaya has you know. Um, at 12, she's, she's, she's become, you know, and that's a whole journey, a whole story. That's a whole know. journey. Right. Right. That's a whole journey. We don't mind taking y'all on that one. When we feel I was, like. I'm starting to learn and I'm starting to grow. Um, and, and we have these conversations with Zaya all, all the time is, you know, we're still like learning and we're still, you know, making mistakes. And that's why I like, Zaya, like a lot of people like to say a lot of things about Zaya mom. I had a conversation with Zaya the other day. Zaya is like the biggest troll of herself <laughs> no one controls Zaya more than Zaya trolls Zaya like Zaya walk in with her sweet Zaya voice and then make it like hey dad you know what I mean and like make fun of like the deep voice that she's supposed to have as you are born a man and you know what I mean? and like she's just a troll of herself and, and she doesn't take what people say seriously and it's just been so amazing to understand that we all are learning we all can make mistakes and even in those mistakes it's not my daughter doesn't feel away in this process. She's learning too. Um, she's, you know, and so anyway, I just, I just thought I'd, I'd jump in and. Yes, yes, and I love that. I love that exactly. Just to watch Zaya grow into the uh, this beautiful uh, woman that she's going to become and is uh, is amazing to me as well. I love to have them intellectual, very intellectual conversations uh, with her. Uh, but I was, I was speaking about how you they post uh, the story about. Kavya on Instagram and everybody go on and watch. And what I love about it, I really watched it yesterday and I said, you know what? She's just free. And you know, when you can be your natural self and you don't have your parents saying, sit down. No, stop that. You know, they're, they're, they're restricting you yep. from being who you are, but she's just free. She dance and she loved to jump in the water. She just loved to do and talk. So that's, empowering guys to let our children to be able to look at them and let them be their natural selves and that way you'll be able to see look at okay look at my baby okay i see you i see you instead of restricting them and stopping them Arthur brought something up uh when he was on the show about how when a, people go to church and lord knows it was so true and your baby starts crying he said, and what is the first thing you do? You shh, shh, stop, stop, stop crying, stop crying. So what are you doing? You're, they're expressing, they're expressing their selves. They're, they're using their voice. They're, they're using their sound. So what do we do? We shut their voice down. Right. We shut their sound down. So now they know, okay, I can't speak. I can't do this and that. I thought that was so empowering when yeah. he said that. Cause I was like, okay, I'm ever in a church setting again. The kids can holler all they want. I don't want to stop nobody's voice because a lot of us don't think that way. You know, shh, no, no, take them out in the hall, take them outside and let them just keep on bellowing uh, because and they're speaking. Because they're, you, don't, they're you don't want to parent. You want to shush them because you want to get back to doing what you're doing instead of saying, okay, it's something obviously, either something's wrong and I need to go out and, and, and actually talk to my kid and find out what's wrong, right? And so I have to actually leave now and be a parent. Like a lot of parents don't want to be, it's hard. I'm not, listen, I got too many kids to be a great parent to each one of them. I'm not going to even lie to you. Um, I'm try, you. You try to be, but you start getting lazy and you start just being like, shut up. Instead of understanding that this kid is screaming for a reason. They don't have words to be able to say. These screams are their words at, the, at certain ages. And so you have to find out what it is and what's the reason. So it's a lot of it is, is lazy parenting which a lot of us do, especially if we have multiple kids. And I'm not saying it's a lot of reasons for it. I mean, some people got to work. Some people are single moms, single dads. You know what I mean? It's, it's health issues. It's a lot of reason why you just become like, hey, just do this and do that. But at the same time, we got to understand that if we don't spend more time, individual 
people who are born into this world, um, then, you know, it's going to, we're going to continue to have the, the issues that we have, you know, when it comes to relationships amongst uh, parents and, and siblings and, you know, all these things or just who they become in the world. And so for us in this house, we've had a few shots at it. I have, and we decided that we were going to do it differently. You know, with Kav. We're going to do it differently now with Zaya than we did it with Zaya and Dada um, and, you know, of such, the kids that we're raising. And watching a, a free little black girl is beautiful. I don't see that. I don't get a, I don't, I don't get an opportunity to see that often. I didn't grow up seeing free little black girls in life, right? And so we love the fact that she's free. We also don't, it's, and it's not saying that we just let her run the house and she don't have consequences for certain things that she does. But it's also too, it's just taking a different approach. You know, if she if she's screaming, she yelling, hey, go take your five minutes and go do your thing. Go sit over there and go do your thing for five minutes. Like, you know, they used to say back in the day, uh, they used to call it timeouts. They used to say white people just call it timeouts. The black people, want that. you know how everybody had their thing about people? <laughs> I'm not using the timeout. Well, that's it's, it's, it's allowing you to have time to go and deal with your own emotions. And then let's come back and let's try to use our words as much as we can. Instead mm -hmm. of, let me get this belt. You're crying. I don't right. know what you're crying, but I don't want to hear that shit. Right. And, so, and it's just a different mentality, you know what I mean, that you have to have as you grow and as you evolve and as you see the world grows and evolve. You cannot keep the same mentality. You're just being stubborn to evolution and growth. You know what I mean? And so once you see it, then you know. And that's, yeah. that's what we're doing, what we're trying to do. I love how you brought up the belt. Um, no, I remember. No. <laughs> I remember. Oh, I, guess, uh, you get your auntie, I just seen your auntie Willie, Willie on here. So but BB will know what I'm talking about. I remember the belt and how mom, you know, mom was tired all the time. Hey, BB. Um, hey. Your nephew just spoke to you, precious. And also, I remember a time when Ma used to, you know, we 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 get in trouble and we do we do something, you know what I mean? And Mama be tired. She came home from work and stuff, and she don't have nothing, you know, want to talk and stuff. And so Mom will get out the belt, and we it was a bunch of us, and she had enough strength to whoop everybody. She, you know, at one time. Now I was the sickly kid. And because, uh, you know, I had a heart murmur and this and that. And I'm going to be honest, I played it. I played that card as many times <laughs> as I could to get out of the whoopers. They'll tell you. And so mama got me pent behind a radiator. And mama coming up with that belt. And she just, shut up. You know, they whooping you and telling you to shut up. What do you mean, shut up? And you hit me and you're hurting me. So I just thought in my head, it's time to use the card. And I said, oh, go my heart, mom, my heart. And she, she just thought. <laughs> Had the bell up like this here, and she just looked at me and started laughing. Well, get on over there. And I just grabbed my heart and went over there because the licks kept hurting. But that's something to say. We're we're disciplining them. We're doing what we're doing. We're telling them to shut up. So that means we're shutting up their voice, you know, because uh, you might not didn't do it. I want to tell on who did it, but you keep whooping. I'm whooping everybody in the house. Oh, my God. No, it didn't go. So anyway... <laughs> That's why we have to really start thinking about our form of discipline. There's different ways we can discipline our children. I wish many times I could have sat and just talked to mom. And, um, you know, as we, you know, as we all sit around and talk today, me, your dad and all of us. But my mom was raised in a different um, yeah, yeah. time. Oh, yeah. And so that they didn't have time or they didn't get a chance to to do that. You know, I remember with me when I had you guys, um, I said, I was always going to tell you all how much I love you um, and show my love as much as I could. Cause you know, I was the hugger because mom didn't, I uh, wasn't able to do that. Mom was really not a hugger. She was not that person that, you know, showed that emotion. Um, and I found out about her life later, but that's another story anyway. But my mom wasn't able to give that. So that's why it was important for me to, you know, hug you all or to put in your head, who your favorite girl? And you'll say, you, ma, you know, just to express the love as best as I knew how to express it. And even with my children, my girls, you know, they get into the fights in the house. Well, mama whoop us when we fight each other. When mine fight and fought each other, I used to say, when they get through, I said, okay, go over there and uh, hug and kiss her. Now, you know, that's the last thing you want to do when you're mad at somebody 
is hug and kiss them. No, you and that's to, why I used to make them do. And you don't want to look at them. You don't want to touch them. No, but it brought down the heat. They they start laughing, you know, and and, and let you know because that that's the that's the way I discipline. That's the way I dealt with uh, the situations with my children. You know, my dad used to make um, my stepbrothers and I put on um, boxing gloves. So whenever we got you know got into it in the house and he called us, he put on boxing gloves and make us box in front of everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And I used to get my head beat in by Demetrius, and I used to beat Donnie head in. We used to just go back and forth. But <laughs> it's different eras, it's different ways. We understand that, and I think the thing is, is what we also have to understand and appreciate is, is this: we're all are not alike. It's so many different ways to be. And so if this is not what you see is that's fit for you and your family, and this is not this is not the vision for you guys, then this conversation is not for you. It doesn't mean that it's not for someone else. So we need to always stop trying to, you know, to stop conversations of happening. Like we we live in a world right now where you cannot ask questions. You cannot have conversations with people when we're in a world where it's a lot of questions to be to, that needs to be asked and a lot of answers that we need that we should be trying to get. But we can't do it. We in this cancel culture, right? It's like how how are you gonna? I, I don't I don't understand. But anyway, I got a question for you, mom. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, you got a question for me. As someone who, right now, you are in a, a space of what what we would call, um, you know, evolution and growth. And remember, I told you when we were in Atlanta, I said we were sitting outside the house, and I said, "Jolinda, nice to meet you." Right? Like you're finding Jolinda. And, and and so let, the question I have for you is someone who has lived different lives, right? You you lived that first life of, you know, of having kids at a young age and being a young mom, right? Having your kids very early to being married to, you know, then enjoying the, the fruits of life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of people, when you when we talk about, oh, my mom was incarcerated, my mom was on drugs, they, they automatically go to all the negatives of it. But here's the thing. A lot of people do a lot of substance. It's sometimes because of things in your life happen, you end up uh, abusing substance. But that wasn't the goal when you went in it. The goal was to get that 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 vino. You know, you know how you vibe off that vino, or when you get that smoke, you know how it take you, it take you to another place, or just it limits your stress or whatever, right? And then sometimes things happen in our life and we go beyond. And so, then you. You went, then you went to prison. Then you came out of prison. You became a pastor, right? This, this, this pastor who believed and needed to believe in this and needed to believe in something. You went through that journey and now you're teaching in a whole different way. You're living in a different place. You're in this, this space of growth. How, as, how can you, as someone who is, uh, what, we 67 miles, 68 coming up, right? Yeah. I'm starting yeah. to lose track. Of, I'm trying to lose track of your dead age. Just getting to that point. Um, but how can you as someone who, you know, who grew up the way you grew up, who mom grew up the way she grew up, you know life the way you knew life. How do you evolve? How can you grow? And how can you not just say, I'm a finished product, I am who I am, except who I am? How do you continue to evolve and grow? I mean, you have a trans granddaughter. And and we know a couple of years ago, like you would it was different, it would have been diff difficult for you to accept what that is because of what the Bible says, right? Or, or whatever the case may be. So how do you grow? How do you evolve? How do you accept as an, as an older person in this world? Well, you know what? It's, it's really based on my, on my relationship with God, my relationship, right? And so um, it, 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 like you said, it's, it can be a whole nother show too. It, it's like going back to that place when, uh, when I was called out of uh, the choices and the lifestyle that I led and actually being um, introduced to this voice. Voices that I've been hearing, by the way, I'm gonna have a book out, Conquering Me, but voices I've been hearing way back when I was young, but didn't understand who this was, what this was. So once this voice became clear to me, it opened up a, uh, a role to me because people got to understand, I've always wanted to be a mother. I wanted the white picket fence. I wanted the big house. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a psychologist, a very intellectual kid. But like you said, my role took me to a place of enjoyment, to a place of abusing, abusing the drugs because of the situations that was happening around it. You know, so now I have to be rescued from this place by God because, okay, 
Dwayne have now made it to where he done made it to. Everything is in place. It's time for you to come out. But so when the voice spoke, I had to make the decision to answer the voice. And when the voice said, uh, having a form of godliness, denying the power thereof, party's over. So I had to respect that. You know, and I had to say, you know, because I was tired. I'm really in my mind. I was tired. And I've shared with people many times I wanted to commit suicide. And because God always was there and was my rescuer, he'll show me you all's faces. And because you were my only baby, you know, girls, if y'all listen, ain't no need tripping. Because you was my own, my baby son, my, my only son. Well, I would see your face even more. And that gave me reason and purpose. I had to push past that. That, that dark suicide thing that was trying to come and take me away, not knowing that God had a bigger plan for me. Mm -hmm. Everything that I went through is now able to be used in a way in which God showed me is somebody else that's there. You have so much gold and knowledge with inside of you that's more than money, that's more than anything that can help somebody. So I started listening. You know, I didn't know how to pastor when I found out, Pat, who? I'm an introvert. I don't want to be around all them people. God know right. I ain't never lost a whole lot of people. You know, <laughs> right. so what he did, he raised me up and he gave me the ability to speak to these people. So out of prison, working for him in prison, come straight out, get this church. And I bless God for Jesus because that's why he had you where he had you at because he knew he was going to use the heart that you have for me and for what I believed in to help me to even get a place to have this, this, this church where these people can come in and we can do what we naturally was born to do. And that's help. You know, that before the show, I told you, it's just like, we've been doing it ever since I can know, just helping, you know, help people the best way I knew how, you know, and then when the destination so that place was coming down to an end and he'd come and let me know now I'm getting ready to never been out of Illinois as far as moving. You know, I've been in the military with your dad, but never been out of Illinois. I'm going to move and then to speak to you without you even knowing he's speaking to you. Why he done spoke to me when you said, so ma, you ready? I'm like, looked at him like, hi, no, what's going on you know, we were in Miami when you asked me that. And he had been speaking to me. So to even make that, that, that move there, it was very difficult for me because I didn't, at the prison, Dwayne, I didn't know me. I, I, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to know me. I just went on God's assignment. You know, I couldn't even make it all your games. I wouldn't make it. I, I rather start, I'm going, this is my responsibility. This is my assignment. But when I can get away and see my boy, I'm going to see my boy. But I didn't know me. So then it was like, okay, this move here, he shut me down, no social media, anything, put me in this beautiful home that my son was able to help and put me in and set me out there on my little beautiful balcony and said, I'm going to introduce you to yourself. And everything was quiet. You remember you was like, my quiet over there, what's going on? And your, your, your wife said, uh, what's going on over there now? We don't hear nothing. Yeah. Your wife said, she's going to be okay. She's going to be okay. So that was that time when I was getting to know more about me. And I'm still learning things about me because it got repressed when I when I went off the road and start becoming overindulgent in, uh, in the drugs that we were doing. You know, I don't know if you knew, but I think we did share that I had almost got raped. You know, had to jump out of a window, glass all in my body. I was with your dad then. So that was an experience we, we went through when we were in our 20s. Well, he had to take all this out of me. Okay, guess what? It stayed here. I didn't heal from it. I was able to block it with what? With my weed. Get my drink. I'm able to block this stuff all off. You know, I've got to move on. But the fear and everything was there. So I'm able to keep evolving because of the God that stays with me, that stays before me. I don't care what I go through. I don't care what I go through, my highs and my lows. I look for him and I have to believe and I have to know for a fact that he's the one that always show me the direction. This thing here, better help, better me. What my plan? Right. All of a sudden he showed me, okay, you know, you, you had diabetes, your heart was going crazy, your liver was this here, blah, 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 this and that. And he said, now look back, now look now. And he said, now you have some information that I want you to share with the people. And then all of a sudden, like you said, once mama gets something, she on it. All of a sudden, mama's day, 
he got me launching, you know. And then I'm thinking, that, okay, that's season over with. And then he tell me, oh, no, 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 there's a season two. I'm with, you know, just like you, showing me the vision, how it's supposed to look, the people, this and that. Lord, I can't get all these people. You just do the vision. I I, I provide, you know, because I got to get my son. I need big weight. I need, and he starts showing me. And reason Better Health, Better Me is so rich is because it opens up the door to everything, the, 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 the mental part, the, the soulish man, the, the spiritual man, the physical man. It covers everything. Whereas when I was churching, I, co I basically dealt with the spiritual man, the spiritual part of a man, you know, but now it's the whole van. So I love my assignment that I'm on. So the answer to your question, I know that was really long because I run. Uh, my involvement comes from my evolve, my involvement Evolving comes from my involvement, my, my relationship that I have with uh, with the Holy Spirit and all the, the, the empowering people that he puts around me so that I can become my better self. Involvement with God. I mean, you said it, right? Your involvement comes with your involvement with God, right? God. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I was going to say, too. See, I know you called it. Go ahead and use that. Oh, you can put that on your on your Better Help, Better Me shirt. That, that actually look good <laughs> right here on that. <laughs> Okay, look, now it's 1046. I want to get in. I want to ask this question here. Everything you do, and I know, I know you are a businessman, and I know everything you do is to better your family, to leave them in a better place, better all of us. I mean, he got myself, his dad, and just so much. We're so blessed to have you, and I tell you that all the time. But you can't do that if your health is poor. So what do you do as far as making the decision, okay, I can't be all fat, sloppy, out of shape and try to, you know, do this here for my family. What do you do? I mean, what is the mindset that you have when it comes to the, your health, Dwayne? Well, I'm on a journey, right? Like we all are on, we all are on our own individual, individual journey. Yeah. And I think sometimes we, we get lost depending on what happens in our life. But I love my wife. I love my kids. I love my parents. I love my friends. But at the end of the day, I am on an individual journey to find the best me to be able to present to the world, to be able to present to my family, and so forth and so on, right? And so you have to be self-aware enough to know what things you need to be able to present the best person, right? And so for me, may not be for everybody else. I I physically need to feel good. I physically need to look good. <laughs> like, you know that old saying that player that people have, I don't know if you, in the black community, it's like, if you play good, if you look good, you play good. Yeah. Look good comes first. Yeah. I, believe I actually believe in the play, if you look good, if you look good, you play good. But one thing I do do, mom, and just a piece of my journey is every day I wake up when my body wakes me up. So if my body wakes me up at four in the morning, my body wakes me up at five, six, whatever, as soon as my body wake up, I'm up and I'm getting to my day. And because I know it's so many things I need to do for my individual self before I allow myself to open up to other people. I gave you this analogy. I gave you the charge the battery analogy, right? Every night before we go to bed, most of us in this world, we fucking search to find that charger to recharge our phones. Because we know the next day we're going to need 100% battery to talk to everybody, to do our TikToks, to be on social media. We need energy. We need power. Like, we got to power up. But we don't do that in our own individual lives. We don't power up. We mm. just give people our energy over and over and over again. And so what do you have for yourself? What do you have for your wife? What do you have for – because you're not powering up. So for me, I wake up about 6 in the morning every day. I don't start my day until 10 o'clock for the most part when it comes to work. So I have four hours to power up me. And whatever that is, the first thing that is for the most part is getting in the gym. It's physically training. It's making sure that I'm clearing my mind. Anything that I was dreaming about, anything I was thinking about, it's coming out real early in the morning. I'm sending voice notes. I'm thinking of all ideas as I'm in the gym and I'm getting it. And so the first thing I do is I get out of bed and I get to the gym. And then from there, when it comes to your mental health is moments where I sit out outside in solitude. It's moments where he's right here right now. My little homie Trey, we take a we take a walk. It's moments where I listen to meditation. 
I have people that I have someone who I, I call on when it comes to, hey, I need a meditation right now. I need spiritual, um, you know, awakening at this point. Like I do all those things before I give my energy. So I charge my battery up. And so a long answer to say, we can't wait to eat better. We can't wait to to take walks or to have jogs or to start training. Like what are we waiting for? Like when you get older and my body has hurt before I've had surgeries when I retired, I wasn't training. I was like, oh, I don't want to train no more. It hurt to walk up the stairs. It hurt to get out of the seat. It hurt to get out of my cars. You don't want that because if your body hurt, you're not going to be your best self. And so to present your best self to the world, you got to take uh, you got to take care of the physical and you also got to take uh, take care of the inner to present to anyone and be able to give your best self. And so I think it's very important to work on all these tools, the heart, the mind, like you have to train all these these tools that, that you've been given to be able to present your best self to the world. Hey, man. And you do you 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 I see posts of you and your wife, man, I'm I'm I'm, I'm so, you know, we women. So she just inspires me. You know, I'll be, I be hey, Gab, getting that thing in. That'd be kidding it. Like, <laughs> yeah. wow. Getting up like she, you would think she's a professional athlete. How she be getting up? She made me get myself out of bed. Like when I was like when I be wanting to be lazy, I'd be like, "You getting up at five thirty workout?" And before she goes to work, before she has to be downstairs for breakfast with her daughter, before she has to like her schedule is crazier than mine. And she gets up and she trains, so I have no other choice but to get up. Like that Gatorade commercial and try to get out. You know, I mean, we compete sign silently. Uh, so yeah, man. You know, it's just like. We both believe in it. We, we both know that life is stressful, y'all. Life is hard enough. I tell my son all the time, life is hard enough, especially being a black man in America, being a black woman in America, it's hard enough. Don't, <laughs> I be telling him like, listen, if you, why well, start at the end of the line <laughs> when you can start in the middle somewhere? <laughs> don't, don't fight, don't fight against the opportunities and the resources that God gave you. Life is hard enough. You feel me? It's going to be enough that's going to happen in life that's going to make it tough. So what you can control, control. I love that. What you can control, control. Somebody said, D, that is true. Listen, I can take one question because uh, we're getting down low. So the first one that sent me a question that I'm going to run to right quick. Uh, you got three minutes, three minutes. Somebody got a question for my beautiful son, D. Wade. Thank you so much, Precious, for even being on the uh, program with me today. I love looking at your beautiful face. Don't he look younger, y'all? Now, it's just not me as his mama, but I just believe he just look even more younger as he's aging because he's taking uh, especially care of himself. Okay, B, we know we, we know you love him. I'm talking about, I'm trying to get the question, people. She got that little heart thing going and everything. Anybody got a question? All right, listen. Um, once again, I think he, he just ended it Somebody said, I'm talking about how good you're looking. Yes, I'm getting X on that. But anyway, we might not get a question, son. But anyway, okay, uh, somebody said, why start at the end of the, oh, somebody, they're picking up your statements that you're, that you're saying. Okay, so somebody said, what's your diet like? Actually, I don't know if you can do it. Can you do it in two minutes? I mean, yeah, I'm, I don't, I'm not on a diet. I'm right, on. I love it not a diet it's a lifestyle right and so once you realize that once you take it away from oh i gotta get on a diet or oh i gotta go hard for a month and this has become a part of your everyday your lifestyle you can eat what you want to eat right you can learn what you should eat and when you should eat your body don't tell you my body tells me when hey bro you need to start putting some eat the salads eat the fish put them burgers and that pizza down because i love to indulge and so it's a lifestyle mom it's not it's not a diet Amen. All right, Cynthia, I hope that answered your question. It is a lifestyle, and that's what we teach on Better Health, Better Me, making it a part of your life. I don't do diets either. Don't even, because how many times we we don't been on diets, and I called that I called uh, um, di uh, diabetes because I was dieting. I called all the little foolishness that happened because I'm you know I'm going on this diet to lose this and lose that, and then we get discouraged and we're gonna try this diet. No, no, it's no, no, no. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. You know, you uh, know. Oh, somebody said, ever consider writing a book on teens? 
On teens? On teens, T E N N S, teenagers. Teens, yeah, that's what she said. No, I, I haven't. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. I've written, well, I've written two books, but I've written one that's been, you know, no, I've written two of them, even though it's a photo book, I had a lot of words and context. So uh, I don't know. Uh, these are like, once again, guys, I'm not an expert in any of those things besides the fact that I've, the stuff I'm talking about is what I've lived and what I experienced. And so I'm not like, when I say things, I'm not saying things to, like I said, if it's not for you, then it's not for you. But I know some of the things that I deal with and I go through and what I say, I know is others that are going through the same thing. And so mom, you mentioned this, my wife and I, we went through surrogacy when we went through Zaya, you know, when we talked about Zaya, um, in trans, when we have went through all the things that we've been through, we share with the world, not because we want you guys to talk about our family, not because we're getting paid off of it. We share because it's our responsibility to share the things that we go through in life that we know others are going through, right? That's what our family has been about. It's about sharing our journeys. My mom don't want to be vulnerable and tell you guys about, you know, her addictions and the things she's went through, but it's, it's called to like, hey, you went through this, it's, it's on you, it's, it's just part of your purpose is to share these things. And so for everybody out there, just understand when we as a family, the ways come out and say stuff, we're not saying this for you if it's not for you. But if it is, please understand that these are things that we're experiencing in real time. And this is the life. This is one of the lives out here. <laughs> and so that's all we're doing is sharing our experiences. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God. I saw all this powerful. I'm going to go back and look at this myself, too. There's some stuff I'm going to get from this here. Uh, I- there goes. There goes there go, uh, Trey. Trey, what's up? Say what's up to my mama. Say, hey, mom. Hey, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my son, thank you again for sharing your day with me. Um, I really, really enjoyed it, and I know my guests that have came on enjoyed it. Remember, guys, you can go to my YouTube page, um, my YouTube channel, I'm sorry, check in with Mama Wade, and you can be able to look at this interview uh, all over again. And we're going to try to get it in other social media sites. My son did give me a lot of, lot of wisdom before we got on. So, Hey, Lisa, Lisa just joined. Um, so we're going to be able <laughs> that to sounds like Lisa. She just joined. We're about to end. Yeah. That's- yeah hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to uh, get ready to let him go now. And, um, once again, you know, mommy loves you and mommy, continue to pray for you and just wish the best for you and thank you for loving me and thank you for just being uh being god's perfect creation for me you know so just wanted to say that to everybody uh i'm in love with my son and i don't care who knows it (laughs) (laughs) this artwork behind me yeah the first this is the first and only to this point the only art that i personally bought for myself and the reason I bought it is because at the bottom it says life, right? It's, it, it has some some things going on, but at the bottom it says life, and it spoke to me. And all the things we're talking about is, and my mom is talking about, and we're and the guests are talking about is ways to live a better uh, life for yourself. And this is not about anyone else. This is not doing it for a relationship, people. This is not doing it for comments or likes on social media. This is doing it for yourself. And that's where my mom and that's what everyone is talking about. And so. It's about life and it's about your life. So everybody take care of yourself. Better have better me, mom. Thank you for having me on. Peace out. Love you. Love you. <laughs> wow. Woo. Pray you guys enjoy that. Uh, we got one minute left. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't get to all of the questions uh, that you all had, but I want to thank you all so much for joining me. And uh, that was a very pleasurable moment for me. You know, we as parents, uh, we understand our children are busy, but when we get a moment with them in whatever way necessary, and I love how, you know, you can use social media and you can lose these phones and stuff like that to do positive things with, and it can be to communicate with our kids. But man, it was so much knowledge in that, guys. you got to go to my YouTube channel, watch this all over again so that you can be able to... uh, share it and let others sit around and look at it. That's the YouTube channel. And while you're there, subscribe, subscribe. We're, he's so excited about what I'm doing and we're really looking into how we're getting ready to expand this because he said the topic's been amazing. So listen, go to my YouTube page, guys. Just look at all today and all the previous ones and just subscribe or just go and subscribe. And if you want to get off the page, fine. I'm trying, I'm working something. 
Uh, so we're at that hour. If you want to send me something, you remember, you can send it to www.jolindaway.com. Any type of message, if I think you are, we can make a show with it, then that's what we'll do. I love you. And this is Mama Wade getting ready to check out. Enjoy your day. <laughs>